Welcome to GenRocket. This video is about why synthetic data. Well, current data challenges in the marketplace, most of how data is created today is using a spreadsheet uh, or using production data. So a spreadsheet, of course, is labor intensive. It's a manual process. Uh, there's limited volume and uh, variety. And of course, uh, spreadsheet data is two dimensional. And of course, real world data is n dimensional. And production data, while that's useful and it's real data, uh, it can take time to provision, can be very expensive to actually have the resources and staff to go and pull that data and look for the right data that you need within there. And there's still a limited variety because sometimes or quite often the data doesn't exist in the production data set. And that leads us to synthetic data, which has huge benefits in the marketplace. So of course, production data is realistic, so is synthetic. But then you have this beauty of security. So we all understand about uh, GDPR and PII and PHI data. And there are some perspectives that mass production data can be reverse engineered. There's none of those concerns with synthetic data. And while production data has a certain amount of variety, synthetic data can have unlimited variety. And you can do all possible permutations and combinations of data if you'd like to. And then you start from a testing perspective you can get negative data, edge case data, that's i.e. not a happy path data, intentionally bad data. You can get new data and unique data. And a hot area, really interesting area for synthetic data is in motion data. So data that may flow across APIs or between systems, between microservices and so forth. So data in motion sort of carrying further on that, you might start thinking about data feeds. Uh, imagine you in, in financial services and you're trying to simulate uh, data feeds across uh, microservices um, or simulating payments and so forth. That's an example or transactional data where you want transactional data in the future or past or simulating negative transactions uh, or message data. Uh, there's a big shift going on between Swift messages now to new standard ISO 20022 or Kafka messages. Then in the IoT space where you've got sensors uh, all over the place, uh, that's not sitting in a production database. That's not spreadsheet data. That's real time in motion data coming from meters, from sensors. It's real time. Um, the beauty of synthetic data is this can be simulated. Of course, workflow data data that's in a particular state at a stage. If you're doing testing, you don't always have data in the right state. Uh, you're hunting for it. Lovely to be able to synthesize that as you need it. Of course, for AI and ML, uh, you need multivariate data, i.e. multiple dependent variables, and then you need it in a nonlinear randomized distribution profile. That's one of the most challenging requirements for AI ML training. And that's the beautiful thing about synthetic data, it can synthesize that. So to sort of summarize synthetic data, if you're talking about testing, you have the beauty of being able to design any test data, whether it's data feed or X12 EDI or sensor data for COT system like Salesforce and SAP and Guidewire, or if you're gonna be just having data that gives you all the variety that you need, the positive, the negative, the unique and so forth. And it can be for any kind of a test that's required. Thanks for listening for this GenRocket video.